Welcome back to the introduction to Animation Notes tutorial series. If you came here directly, you might want to start at the beginning. All the info and links are in the video description below. In this video, we will use falloffs to move objects. Let's maybe start with a simple plane inside of our node tree. We're going to do something very similar to what we had before. So first, I want a matrix distribute and I want an object instancer. I use my plain object. I enable copy full object because maybe I'm just going to add a solidify to this. Give it a little bit of a thickness to make sort of a, a tile or something. Um, I'm going to do this. I just take the vectors into the instances and when I do that animation nodes will automatically add a get length node for me because a list of vectors into a integer input can basically only mean I want the length of this list, which of course in this case is true. Then I want these objects to be placed to these locations here. So these vertices, ah, these objects to these vertices. I have to clean this up a little so that it doesn't get so messy. Now I have a grid of planes, almost looks like tiles. Let's switch this over to step. Let's do 10 by 10 again and then increase the distance to a little bit more than 2, 2.1. Cool. I'm going to hide my original plane. Also drag it out of this collection here so I can hide it. And now I have this grid of tiles. Okay, so this gives me the basic layout. Then just like before, I want to do some uh, math here to actually change this and make it look more interesting. Just like before, we're going to take a vector offset. Let's now try and maybe get a sine wave going through all of these tiles here. So we have the offset on the c-axis and we have a falloff. The falloff, there's all sorts of different falloffs and we're going to check out the object controller in a second. But right now I'm just going to take a custom falloff so I can plug in uh, numbers here. And what do I want to plug in? Hmm. Uh, if I want a sine curve going on the x-axis, I first need to figure out like the x location of each tile. How can I get the x location of the tiles? I can do object transform input. Remember, plug the object in here and then you get a list of locations. I want to read the location information. Uh, but this is now a list of vectors and here I need a list of basically floating point numbers. So what if I take a vector separate node, take all these vectors. This actually takes a single vector, but as soon as I plug in a list, it gives me a list of x values. And if I take that as the strength value now, for my custom fall off, I get this. Okay, that looks correct actually, because the X location of these tiles is negative. So we're moving down on the C axis. Remember this is basically now the distance here, Let's set it to one. The ones on the right, this one is one over, so it's being moved up. That looks good, but this is of course not a sine curve. How can I get a sine curve going? Well, how about I take the X value that I have, take a number math node, because I know that the number math node has all sorts of functions built in, and it has a sine function built in. So now I have a sine wave going through here. It's not very visible because maybe we just need more objects. Let's, let's do 20 in the X and 10 in the Y. Okay. And it looks like this. And this is just numbers now. So I can do anything that I want with this. I could, for example, take another number math node, plug it in here. 
and then multiply my x value by some factor like 0.1 or point something. Ooh, okay. So I'm getting, okay, point three looks cool. So now we have an X, uh, I mean a sine wave going through our 20 uh, objects on the X axis here. Uh, all done with basic math. Take the X location, multiply it by some factor to make it, to change the frequency basically. Then plug that into a sign, plug that into a custom falloff, and then offset all of our vectors that we get from our distribute matrix uh, node, and then actually apply that transformation to these objects. Very interesting. How would we do this if I set the Y uh, subdivisions also to 20? Now, how could we maybe add a wave going this way also. Well, we know that we're gonna maybe do a cosine. So let's do cosine. Let's take the Y through some factor. So the Y location of the tile. Again, multiply with some factor. Take that for the cosine a function. And then uh, we can't change anything here because this is changing the C based on this fall off. All we really need to do is plug in another offset. Now we're also changing the C, but based on this custom fall off, right? Yep. So now we have sine going this way, cosine going this way. We can change the frequency of the cosine, maybe make it like this. Okay, and you can already see by simply changing these values here, we're animating stuff. Maybe that's why it's called animation nodes. We're still not animating actually, nothing's happening when I'm changing the timeline. I'm just setting up uh, my calculations, my node tree, all my math that I want. So this is the custom uh, fall off based on some sort of math that you can come up with. Now there's another cool type of fall off in the fall off menu here and that's the object control. There's many different ones here and really the key to learning animation nodes is go and try it out and play with it and you can spend hours, days and weeks doing this. But I just want to show you the object controller because that's another type of fall off. So the output is this bright green thing that we need for an offset vector node, for example. How about we add another object, I mean offset vector node here. Plug in this fall off again on the C axis. So we're all only ever changing the C axis of, of the tiles here. But this time we want to change the value here with the fall off based on the location of another object. That's basically what this object controller fall off does. So we need another object. Let's take a monkey. Okay, so here we have a monkey and we eyedropper the monkey in here, Suzanne. Then we have an offset, we have a fall off width, and we have an interpolation uh, type here. Let's just leave that as it is right now. Now, what if I move the monkey? Nothing happens, why? Because the node tree doesn't uh, execute. I'm just gonna switch on always. Maybe we have to increase the fall off width here. So we're taking the location of the monkey, and you can think of this fall off with here, here it says sphere, okay? So around the location of this monkey, you have to imagine a sphere with this radius. Maybe let's set it to 10, okay? And wherever the monkey is, and I'm moving the monkey, and the node tree is being executed because it's set to always, otherwise nothing happens, okay? So I'm moving the monkey, and the distance of the monkey to the tile with a linear fall off in that virtual sphere that you have to think of now changes the C location of the tiles after we have our sine and cosine applied. So now by simply moving the monkey, 
I can manipulate the C location. I could also do the X location, but maybe that looks a bit weird. Yeah. You can come up with all sorts of cool things here. So move the monkey, the closer it gets. So if it's far away, now nothing's happening. And as soon as I come closer, I'm influencing the C location with the object controller fall off. Okay. Now, what if I don't want to move or change uh, the position of the tile? What if I want to change the rotation of the tile? We know that a vector is not an Euler, right? For the rotation, we have to plug in an Euler. Here we get a, a vector. How can we change a vector into a rotation? What if I just want to rotate on the x-axis, for example? Let's see. We need a rotation. We need an Euler to from vector. Well, that looks just like what we want, doesn't it? So we want an Euler. We want a vector to Euler. That sounds good. Use degrees because I can think better in degrees. Let's take these vectors and now we get a list of Eulers. Oh, and now the location of the monkey is actually changing the rotation. Hmm. Let's see. So what if we uh, want to flip the tiles uh, 90 degrees on the x-axis? Um, with this offset vector, but for the location, we, we don't want this, of course, in there. We just have the sine and cosine offset. And then for the rotation, we're using this monkey offset. So now we have this. Wherever the monkey is the closest, the tile is rotated up 90 degrees. We have this spherical fall off here that you can see here, uh, sphere, and then linear. So we're changing the rotation with the position of the monkey. And we have those uh, sine and cosine waves in there. Now we can also change the interpolation. For example, we don't want linear, maybe we want cubic. So we have a stronger effect where the monkey is. You have to think of this curve just like it's shown here for the start and the end, which you can enable here. So you want cubic at the beginning and at the end, or maybe just, maybe just at the end, right? So you can change the, uh, the interpolation of the fall off here. So we're moving the monkey, we're changing the rotation. If we move the monkey away, rotation changes and we have the other setup two here with the sine and cosine. So this is already an interesting looking note tree. Of course, looking at this, I'm thinking, well, now we finally have to actually animate stuff, right? So this is, this is all nice and it's all in real time. Uh, but what if I hit play? Nothing happens. There is no animation. And we will look at that in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, write a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. See you in the next episode. Chris P. Out.